Hey, you this kid Malik, uh, Malik and Malik. So I was just gonna give you the last video I had talked about <clears throat> uh, how I fractured my humerus. So, and just as a recap, I fractured the humerus on July 10th uh, bench pressing at, uh, at the gym that I would go to. Um, and again, just to, to recap the, the odyssey, um, went to the ER, uh, they asked for an x-ray. I assumed it was a, a, a tear, so uh, I skipped the x-ray, um, got an MRI um, because I thought it was a, like a rotator cuff tear. Um, went to a few other doctors. Those doctors, it, it, my arm was too swollen up anyways um, to do anything. Um, and, you know, it was either a bicep rupture or a rotator cuff tear of some form or another. Went to uh, Dr. Robel. Uh, he had a x-ray done and then it showed a fracture. He tossed me to Dr. Demetrius, put me in a kind of a, a claim shell kind of brace thing for, for a bit, for about a week. Came back on uh, I think July 22nd, and then he, you know he presented two uh, options: either stay in the brace uh, for I don't know how, however long, and then maybe the uh, bone would grow back or do surgery. So uh, went ahead and chose surgery uh, because I didn't I don't know I didn't I'm not sure if it would really work out the clamshell brace because I was wearing it and I would be um, driving in the car and stuff and it would you know, or, or, or putting on like an armrest and I could almost, I could feel the bone moving. Um, so July 23rd, uh, had surgery at the new, uh, Mount Carmel facility in Grove city, um, by Demetrius and all his crew. Um, you know, can't speak highly enough of Demetrius, can't speak highly enough of the, the nurses and the anesthesiologists and, and the other folks there. Uh, that the, the hospital is nice, it's clean. Um, I knew they had some Legionnaires thing, but I, I suspect it's probably the safest place to be at this point in time in regards to Legionnaires. I doubt uh, that will ever happen again there, but um, no, it was, it was super clean, uh, super nice, and everybody was pretty cool. Um, and so now I can, you know, move my arm, um, and I'm, it feels sore, obviously, still, but it's, it's, not, it's not really that painful. Um, so, and I'm... Uh, but I got a, a nice fun scar going down my arm and then uh, I on the M, on the x-ray they I had to follow up this past Monday on the x-ray you could see I have a like a like a strip of metal or whatever uh, connecting the two uh, parts of the humerus and then five screws uh, and I guess that's gonna stay in forever so um, but so I'm back together uh, thanks to Demetrius Dr. Demetrius and all the, the folks at orthopedic one uh, again, uh, grateful for uh, the care that they provided. And bring this back to the workers' comp side of things. Um, you know, had this been a work injury, um, I go back to that, that original ER report. It said upper arm, right upper arm pain. I mean, I've gone to so many hearings. Now, fracture might be kind of ridiculous, but I go to so many hearings where the, the uh, initial ER records, uh, there are sparsely document some condition or, or they don't actually examine some body part that's actually affecting the injured worker, whereas the injured worker may have hit, hurt their, their knee and lower back, but the focus of pain was on lower back, so they didn't really put much attention one way or the other to the, the knee. And then, and then once the back gets stabilized, they want to go back and fix that knee, but uh, the, the injured worker hits a roadblock where um, you know they're, they're like, well, the ER records didn't mention anything about the knee. Well, yeah, because they're focusing on lower back. Um, I, that happens all the time. So if you go to the ER, uh, urgent care, or your primary care physician following a work injury, um, tell them about everything that's bothering you in regards to your work injury. If it's your knee, your back, say my back is my primary concern, but my, my knee is also hurting me. Um, please examine it as well. It's hard to do that in the spur of the moment. I get it because you're in pain and pain tends to uh, mute. <laughs> the focus basically is I don't want to be in pain anymore, so stop the pain. I don't care what you do, just stop the pain. You're not logically thinking, okay, well, if this is a worker's comp claim, how am I going to strategically set this up so that, you know, some skeptical hearing officer doesn't deny or doesn't deny my, my either my additional condition or, or whatever because of I wasn't of, of the right mind at the time to focus on 
um, the knee as well. So that's that's one thing to think about. And the other thing to think about is is too. Again, this is I'm paying for this with my own private insurance. It's not a work injury, so why, you know why why would I um, submit a claim? But there's a there you're entering two dimensions with these things with a work injury. You're you're submitting your claim to the BWC claims process. So it's it is it is a process, and it's typically the the time for these things to happen is it's elongated. So if you're in pain, and and what I mean by that is like you you, you, you the claims either allowed or or it's, or it's not allowed. You have to go to a hearing, an initial hearing to get the claim allowed. That's gonna be the injury happens in April. That's at the quickest. It's not gonna happen until the end of May when you have your initial allowance here. It's likely gonna be in July or August, unfortunately. So, meanwhile, you're suffering with whatever's bothering you. Presumably, if you had a fracture, that'd probably get taken care of. Probably when you when you're closer to when you had the injury, but maybe not. Um, and so there's that issue. And, and but at, comparing it to um, you know personal insurance, you know I, I uh, uh, happened July 10th, and then I have had surgery to July 23rd. That's like in, comparing that to like a workers' comp claim. That's like instantaneous uh, treatment, basically. Um, so you got to kind of ex if and, and the reason why I say this is if you have personal insurance, Medicaid, uh, you're a veteran, so you go to the VA. Sometimes if you could get your treatment, whatever's wrong with your body fixed through those other means, I would seek that and, and also on a parallel path, seek your workers' comp claim. The problem is is sometimes insurance companies will not do so until something's absolutely or absolutely certain it's been denied by the workers' comp system. Um, but I, I find it's hit or miss. Uh, some folks run into that barrier, some folks don't. But if, if, if like if you have a rotator cuff tear, and it, that's what's preventing you from earning a living, you got to get it fixed as fast as possible. So for one, so you get back to making money. Two, to uh, cut down on possible um, you know problems that may develop because you hadn't gotten it as soon as possible. You know if 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 you should have gotten a rotator cuff repair, you know a month after the injury and versus you know a year and a half. It's better to get it through a month after the injury, obviously, and so you don't develop those complications. So again, if that if that opportunity or that pathway is available, take it, and then uh, we'll still try to pursue your claim and, and get your uh, bills paid for it retroactively through your BWC claim. So this is my uh, my thoughts on this. But um, so my my arm is it's back it's back together uh i still can't you know the range of motion isn't all the way there i'm not allowed to raise my arm above my head at this point in time um actually i could i could flex pretty good i can't extend it all the way um still a little every once in a while there's a little bit of soreness but nothing that uh, you know uh, an advil can't uh, tamp them down but it's really not bad so um but uh i want to thank you for watching this video and again if you have a work injury um, you know, give us a call, uh, give us an email. Um, my email is kip, K-I-P, at, at maliclawfirm.com, so you give me an email at any time. Phone number is 614-444-7440, and then obviously you go to our website, maliclawfirm.com. But uh, give us a call, and we'll see if we can help you, and, and, and I hope we can. And, and, that's, and, and, and we really strive to um, help the folks that we uh, represent because we care about these folks and and we care because you know these things happen to us too so um i hope you're doing okay and um uh, thanks for watching this video and i think the next video that i'm going to make is i'm going to explain um how to appeal uh, when an mco denies treatment so what that means is like say your workers comp doctor requests an mri and the managed care organization rather than authorizing it deny it denies it so i'm going to show you what we do um in appealing those denials the steps that we take so that's the next video that's coming up um it's, it's not the most exciting thing in the world but it might give you some insight on how that works because and 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 just to give you a little hint a lot of these videos are prompted by questions that i get uh from uh
people that call in or, or clients or, or this and that. So that's kind of the, the driving force of, of that idea. So thanks again.